In this video, I am going to assume you already know how to generate a sequence and find the nth term of a sequence. If you are unsure how to do either of these, I'd recommend checking out my videos on those first. There will be links to those in this video's description. In this video, we're going to look at sequences that are represented in diagrams. Each of the diagrams is sometimes known as a pattern. So let's have a look at a pattern that's made using sticks. Here we have pattern 1 that looks like this. Then we have pattern 2, pattern 3, and pattern 4. The first question you could be asked about this is to work out how many sticks there will be in pattern number 5. To work out how many sticks there are in pattern number 5, we could draw out pattern number 5 and then count the sticks. To do this, we draw pattern 1, which looks like this, and then we can draw pattern 2 by adding on 3 more sticks, 1 horizontally and 2 vertically. Then we can get pattern 3 by adding 3 more sticks, and then pattern 4 by adding 3 more sticks again. So to get the next pattern, we're always just adding on these three sticks. So we can get pattern 5 by adding on three more. And then we just need to count up how many sticks there are. So if I group these sticks into 5, it will be easier to count. We have 5, 10, 15, and then two more, so 17. So the answer to this question is 17. Now we could have answered this one as well without drawing out pattern number 5. Instead, we could count up how many sticks are in each of the patterns. So if we count up how many sticks are in pattern 1, you should get 5. For pattern 2, there are 8. For pattern 3, there are 11. And pattern 4 has 14. These numbers here form a sequence. This is a linear sequence where to get from one term to the next, we just add on some number. So to get from 5 to 8, what do we add on? Well, that's 3. To get from 8 to 11, that's also add on 3. And from 11 to 14, that's also add on 3. And this makes sense because when we drew the patterns earlier, to get the next pattern, we drew three more sticks. So to get the number of sticks in pattern five, we can just add on three to 14. If you add three to 14, you get 17, which was the answer we got earlier. Now let's have a look at another question that you could be asked. Find an expression in terms of n for the number of sticks in the nth pattern. All this question is really asking us to do is find the nth term of the sequence that we wrote down in part a. So let's write down that sequence again. 5, 8, 11, 14, 17, and find its nth term. To find the nth term of the sequence, we first of all need to work out what the difference is between each of the terms. And we've already done that, we know that we add 3 to get to the next term. If we add 3, we know the answer must involve 3n. 3n is the 3 times table, so we write this above the sequence. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. We then just need to work out how we get from 3n, the 3 times table, to our sequence. Well, if we look at the first term, 3, to get that to 5, we must add 2. And this works for all of the other terms as well, so the answer to the nth term must be 3n plus 2. And this is the answer to the question. Notice to answer this question we didn't really need the diagrams anymore. We turned the diagrams into numbers by counting how many sticks there were in each of them, and then just found the nth term of this sequence. Let's have a look at a different pattern. This time the pattern is made using squares. Here's pattern 1, pattern 2, and pattern 3. We're going to start with a similar question to before, how many squares will be in pattern 4? Rather than drawing out pattern 4, I'm just going to write down how many squares are in each of the patterns and then use this sequence. So in pattern 1 there's 1 square, pattern 2 has 5 squares, and pattern 3 has 9 squares. So let's take this sequence. To get from 1 to 5 we add 4. To get from 5 to 9 we also add 4. So to get from one pattern to the next one in this sequence, we're just adding on 4. So to work out the number of squares in pattern 4, we can just add 4 onto 9, and 9 plus 4 is 13. So the answer is 13. And then for part b, we need to find an expression in terms of n for the number of squares in the nth pattern. This just means we need to find the nth term of that sequence. So if we take the sequence, we know we add 4 each time to get from one term to the next, so this means the answer must involve 4n. So we write the 4 times table above the sequence, 4, 8, 12, 16, and then we work out how to get from the 4 times table to our sequence. So to get from 4 to 1, we would subtract 3. And this does work with all of the other ones, so it's 4n subtract 3. Now for this question, there are actually two more parts we're going to look at. We've got part C here, which says, how many squares will be used in pattern 30? To answer this question, we're going to bring back the nth term, which was 4n subtract 3. The nth term can be used to work out any number in the sequence. If we substitute n for 1, we get the first number in the sequence. If we substitute n for 10, we get the 10th number in the sequence. So since we want pattern number 30, we're going to substitute this n here for 30. 
so we need to do 4 lots of 30, subtract 3. So 4 times 30, subtract 3. 4 times 30 is 120, so it's 120 subtract 3, which is 117. So the answer to this question is 117 squares. And then we have one final part to this question. Anya makes a pattern from the sequence using 85 squares, and we need to work out which pattern Anya has made. So this time we know the number of squares, but we don't know which pattern number it is. We can see it's not patterns 1, 2 and 3 because they don't have anywhere near 85 squares. So the question is, which pattern is it? Now once again, the nth term comes in handy here. So if we take the nth term, 4n minus 3, this time we can't substitute in a pattern number because we don't know what the pattern number is. That's what we're trying to find out. But we do know it will use 85 squares. So we set this nth term equal to 85, since we know we want to use 85 squares. Then we have an equation to solve. We can solve this by adding 3 to both sides. If we add 3 on the left hand side, that will cancel the subtract 3, so we're just left with 4n. If we add 3 to the right hand side, 85 plus 3 is 88. Then we can divide both sides by 4. 4n divided by 4 is just 1n, and 88 divided by 4 is 22. So we find that n is 22. This means the 22nd pattern will have 85 squares. So we now have the answer to the question. Anya makes pattern number 22. Sometimes we have slightly more complicated patterns. Take this pattern here. In pattern 1 you can see we actually have two different types of circles. We have white circles and grey circles. And the same for pattern 2 and pattern 3. So for the first part of this question it says how many white circles are used in pattern 4. So we need to count up the white circles instead, not all of the circles. So if we count up the white circles in pattern 1 there are 4, in pattern 2 there are 6, and in pattern 3 there are 8. So if we write these down as a sequence, we can see to get from 4 to 6 we must add on 2, from 6 to 8 is also add on 2, so to get the number of white circles in pattern 4 we also add on 2, and 8 plus 2 is 10. So the answer to this question is 10 white circles. For part b it says how many grey circles will be used in pattern 4. So we do the same idea just for the grey circles. So in pattern 1 there are 3 grey circles, pattern 2 has 6, and pattern 3 has 9. So if we take these and write them down as a sequence, to get from 3 to 6, we add 3. To get from 6 to 9, we also add 3. So to get from 9 to the next number, we add 3 again. And 9 add 3 is 12. So the answer is 12 grey circles. For part C of this question, it says, find an expression in terms of n for the number of circles in the nth pattern. So this time it says the number of circles. It doesn't matter if they are white or grey. So we're going to count up all of the circles. So the number of circles in pattern 1 is actually 7. If we count up all of the circles in pattern 2 there are 12. And all of the circles in pattern 3 is 17. So we need to find the nth term of this sequence. To get from one term to the next in this sequence we're adding on 5. So it must be a 5n sequence. So we write the 5 times table above the sequence 5, 10, 15. And then we work out how to get from this to our sequence. In all of these we need to add 2. So the nth term is 5n plus 2. For part d of this question it says, how many circles will be used in pattern 100? So we have the nth term for the number of circles, we worked that out in the previous part, it was 5n plus 2. So to work out the number of circles in pattern number 100, we just need to substitute n here for 100. So we need to do 5 multiplied by 100 plus 2. 5 multiplied by 100 is 500, so we have 500 plus 2, which is 502. And that's the answer to the question. Now let's have a look at one final part to this question that's a little bit trickier. For part E it says, one of the patterns in the sequence uses 72 white circles. We need to work out how many grey circles it will use. So for this one we've been told the number of white circles, so it would be useful if we worked out the nth term for the number of white circles. So let's take the sequence from before of the number of white circles. It was 4, 6, 8 and 10, and let's work out its nth term. To get from one term to the next in this sequence we add 2, which must mean it's a 2n sequence. So if we write down the 2 times table above the sequence, to get from the 2 times table to our sequence, we're always adding 2. So the nth term for the number of white circles is 2n plus 2. Now let's also work out the nth term for the number of grey circles. The number of grey circles went 3, 6, 9, 12. So the difference between each of the terms here is adding 3, so we know it's a 3n sequence, 
And then if we write the three times table above the sequence, three, six, nine, 12, you'll notice this is actually the same as the sequence. We don't need to add anything to this sequence at all. So the nth term is just three n. Now that we have the nth term for the white circles and the gray circles, we're ready to answer the question. The question says there were 72 white circles in one of the patterns. So we need to work out which pattern we're talking about. To do this, we can set the nth term for white circles equal to 2n plus 2. And then when we work out n, that'll be the pattern number. To solve this equation, we're going to subtract 2 from both sides. If we do that on the left hand side, the 2's will cancel, so we just have 2n. And on the right hand side, 72 subtract 2 is 70. Then we divide both sides by 2, and 2n divided by 2 is just 1n, and 70 divided by 2 is 35. This means the pattern that we're talking about must be pattern number 35. So to work out the number of gray circles in that pattern, we can use the nth term for the gray circles, but substitute n for 35. So we just need to do 3 multiplied by 35, which is 105. So the answer to the question, the number of gray circles in this pattern, will be 105. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and why not try the exam questions in this video's description.